I got so much to thank him for. Well, I've got so much to thank him for. So much to praise him for. You see, he has been so good to me. from I've got so much to thank him for Stop and say, Lord, thank you for all you've done for me. And one day I'll reach heaven sure. Oh, please let me kneel once more. I've got so much to thank you for. Well, I've got so to thank him for so much to praise him for you see he has been so good to me and when I think of what he's done and where he's brought me from I got so much to thank book of first chronicles first chronicles chapter number 10 in the holy word of god first chronicles chapter number 10 we're going to read two verses of scripture here this morning and you let the lord speak to your heart in verse number 13 first chronicles chapter 10 verse number 13. Found your place where you stand with us, please. So Saul, referring to King Saul, died for his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him, and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. Father, what a blessing it is. Lord, we don't take this lightly. We surely don't. But what a blessing it is to be here in the house of God, Lord, to hear your people sing praises unto your name, to exalt you, O God, and testify of your goodness. We're thankful for it. Many others, O God, I know, they're grateful to be here today. We are seeking of you now. Father, we pray in the name of Christ. 
for that which we cannot do within ourselves, that which you do not have the power to do. I'm praying that you will pour your spirit out. Great Holy Ghost conviction will fall on this service this morning. Lord, may our words be sharp and seasoned with grace. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will give us that liberty that we stand in need of. Lord, we're seeking of you now that Jesus will be high lifted up. Lord, you will be honored. Everything that we say will be pleasing unto you. We pray this in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Church, just a little bit of uh, information here, if I could give this to us. Uh, First Chronicles and Second Chronicles, these two books were written, they're books of history for the Israelites. It would give us, if we took the time in reading both of these books, a timeline of the history and the life of the Israelites, in essence, of seeing the blessings of God and the acts of God in their life. So these two books here give great history. And old Winston Churchill was uh, given, uh, uh, given credit to making this quote here. And I know many others have made this quote. He said, those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it again. And church, we get, we're given this book here by God and His authority to understand the lives of others. We have been given privy to the lives of people and access to their private life. Now, I guarantee if I did a survey today that none of you would want to give a public testimony of your private life. Amen? I know that none of you will say, well, preacher, go ahead and write it down. I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to be ashamed of. I believe that we all have that. But the God of heaven has blessed us now and given us insight into the lives of others. We have been given a brief history here of the life of Saul. King Saul. Can I just say this here because we have much more to cover. And so if you want to talk more about this later, I'll be glad to. King Saul, regardless of public opinion and, and popular opinion, was a believer in the Lord. King Saul was one that had the Spirit of God ascend upon him. He was one that prophesied with the prophets. He was one that died and went to Abraham's bosom. Now may I say this about King Saul and his life. It's an expression that often is said about people when they die. The life that they lived could have been better. The life that they lived could have been better. When people come out before us even today and they roll their casket out before the people in the congregation, some will make that comment about that individual. They could have had a better life. They could have lived a better life. And I believe in looking at the life of Saul, we could say that he could have had a better life. He could have lived a better life. He comes short of living in the favor of God. Can I remind you the goodness of God. He wants every single person to know Him personally. Amen. He wants every single person to have His favor in His life. He wants every single person to know about love, mercy, grace, and forgiveness. It's unfortunate not everybody has a relationship with God. It is unfortunate not everybody has the favor of God in their life. Now we see this in the life of Saul. And may I say this, he came short of it. Why? Why did Saul come short of the favor of God? Why did he come short of the blessings of the Lord? It can be summed up into one sin called pride. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Saul here was given the commandments, and we'll find this here in 1 Samuel chapter number 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15, you'll find out that God gave Saul the command, go and take out the Amalekites. Go and kill the Philistines. These are people that hate me. They hate you. They want to turn your heart away from God and many other things there. And God gave him that command. And if you know your Bible, you should know your Bible. But what happened now, he was given the Word of God, and we read that here in the text. He was given the Word of God. This is what I want you to do. This is my commandment. And King Saul went out there, and he slew all the people except for the king, and he took the spoils of the land, which God told him not to do. So he disobeyed God. My beloved, I'm telling you this here today. There's a danger of what we have 
have going on in churches today when the Holy Word of God is given to the people of God and you disobey but what thus saith the Lord, what the Bible says, pride has got a hold of your heart. Pride go up before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. And we see this in the life of the life of Saul and how pride just got a hold of him and he rebelled against God. He said, oh no, I'm not going to obey the command of God. I'm not going to kill the king. I'm not going to get rid of all the spoils right there. I'm going to save him. I'm going to keep him there. I'm going to keep the spoils because why? I know better than God. Say, preacher, I don't believe that somebody would think that way and somebody would say those such things. They may not say such a things, but they live that way. And their actions are saying and saying to everyone else around them, I know more than God. Pride is a horrible sin. Do you hear me? And I'm wanting every single one of you to hear me this morning about this thing of pride. The devil doesn't want you to listen about this here, but it's a subject that you need to take heed to. God is a merciful God. Do you hear me? He's a loving God. He's one that gave Saul a chance to repent of his sins. Say, preacher, I don't believe that. Well, you find that over in 1 Samuel chapter number 15. I'm just going to read that there. for you know, We need to hear from God's Word. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter number 15, we find that God gave Samuel a second chance. I'm sorry, Saul, a second chance when he sent Samuel there. And Samuel came to him and said in verse number 14, What meaneth this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? God was telling Samuel, Saul this time through the man of God, I hear the spoils that you should have gotten rid of. You had disobeyed here, but I hear the bleeding of the sheep. And that's what he's saying. I'm giving you an opportunity to do what? Confess the wrong that you have done. I'm giving you the chance to ask God for forgiveness of your sins. But here beside Saul, the king, saying, I did wrong. I disobeyed God. He said, wait a minute. I did this right here. I did this for the people there. I did this for God. And my beloved, may I say this right here? He did it for himself is what he did it for. He did it for nobody else, but his pride got a hold of him and he wanted the things that was not he is. Are you listening this morning? God gave him a chance to repent of his sins, but yet he chose not to repent of his sins. Listen to me well. The psalmist said in Psalms 86 and verse number 5 that the Lord God of heaven, he is ready to forgive. No matter what sin that you have in your life, I'm glad that we serve a God. I'm glad that there's a God of heaven, the only God. He's ready to forgive whosoever. If you just confess your sins, you'll get off your high horse we call it right and admit that you have sinned God will forgive you of your sins listen to me on this word pride pride can be summed up here and C.S. Lewis I love this description of this word pride it is a spiritual cancer is what it is it eats up the, all of the possibilities of love contentment and common sense and my beloved, we see in the life of Saul, that's exactly what took place with him, is that when he had pride in his life, and pride ate at his life, and ate at his spiritual life, like a cancer does to a body there, it robbed him of all of the blessings of God. Pride is self-sufficiency. I can do this all on my own. I know it better than you do. I just, you can't make this up, church. I love the way that the children's lesson went right along with this here. I can do better than God. I know what's right. I never do anything wrong. That's that self-sufficiency. I am important, not God. I'm number one. I am the one that knows it all and is going to do all there. I'm the important one. Also this thing of pride, it is self-exaltation. You are exalting yourself above God. When pride comes into your life, you are following the footsteps of the devil. Amen. When pride comes into your life, for the devil had said himself, before he was called devil, it was Lucifer, the son of the morning, right? He said, hey, that here Lucifer lifted himself and said, I'm going to be higher than God. That pride is an evil thing. The sin of pride, it will lead you. I hope you're listening now. The sin of pride will lead you to all other vices of the devil. It will lead you down a pathway that you never 
thought that you would live. You will do things and you'll look back and say, I cannot believe that I made that choice. And looking at the life of Saul, I want to let you know how harmful this wicked sin is. And all sin is, I promise you it is, all sin is, but pride. Pride, it destroyed his faith in God. Now I told you that Saul knew God. He was a believer in God. He prophesied for the Lord. The Spirit of God came upon him. He did do right in the eyes of God for a portion of his life. But there came a time when he said, nope, I know more than God. I know right, and God's not right in this one right here, so I'm going to do my own thing here. And the Bible tells us that your faith can be destroyed when you have pride in your life. Matter of fact, in the text we see here that when your faith is destroyed, you'll start doing unholy and ungodly things. The Bible tells us about Saul and what he did when the Spirit of God departed from him there. And boy, what happened? He went to the unholy things. He went to one that had a familiar spirit about her. She was one that was possessed with the devil and she was one that can do those things that people even can still do to this day. Say, preacher, you believe that's going on? I sure do. You read that word familiar spirits, it means necromancer. It's one that meddles and deals with those that have already died. And you've got people today that are talking to the dead for the living. Can I tell you this right here, beloved? If my loved one's gone on and they're going on to be with God, there's no need for me to talk to them because why? One day there's going to be a glad reunion that I'm going to be with them forever in heaven and hallelujah for that. But we see what Saul did. He started dabbling in the unholy things. Can I tell you this right here? We don't need the things that this devil has to offer, child of God. Amen. I don't need the horoscope. I already got hope in Christ. Amen. Don't need a lucky rabbit's foot. Amen. Because I'm blessed by the Lord. Uh, hey, and I ain't offending none of you now. This is you. I love you. But I don't need no black eyed peas and hog jowl and greens on the, when it comes for New Year's to receive goodness from God. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you now. He starts dabbling in these things and preaches kind of silly about all this stuff. But I'm just telling you, you can cross over. You start dabbling with that superstition. You start dabbling with that hope and, and that, that, that mystical things of this. Well, hey, now God, I've been blessed because I did this. Or I was blessed because I did this and I've got this little trinket in my life. No, all blessings come from God, not from what man can do here. And Saul lost faith in God and started doing unholy things. Things. Number two, family, I'm sorry, uh, the, the pride will destroy your faith, but pride will destroy your family as well. I can't stress this enough in the day that we need, we need family. You need family, amen? And we see this in his life. Matter of fact, you'll find this out here in 1 Samuel chapter 20. In 1 Samuel chapter 20 and verse number 30, there was Saul so mad at David, wanted to kill David. David wasn't there. But Saul, he had a javelin, and he always went around with that javelin. He had it in his hand there. Never left home without it. And boy, he got so mad. So full of himself and full of anger and bitterness and malice that his own son couldn't even talk to his daddy. Oh, you, I'm telling you now, moms and dads, you can ruin your relationship with your children. And pride will do that. Pride will do that in your relationships. You better get off of your high horse. There ain't no perfect parent in this room. Amen. Amen. None of us are perfect. But here he was now. He was sitting there. You read that and what took place? That Saul, King Saul, took that javelin and he chunked it at his own son and tried to kill his own son. I'm telling you, pride will destroy your family. It distorted his mind so much that nobody's going to backtalk me. Nobody's going to tell me that I'm wrong when I am wrong. I'm never wrong. That's what pride does. Oh, and my child ain't going to tell me I'm wrong. My beloved, may I say this? If you're wrong, you're wrong no matter who it comes from. Oh, I know you didn't like that, but that's all right. It's still the truth, praise God. Hey, a child rebukes you. I'm thankful, hallelujah, that a child can rebuke us when we do misbehave, when we do sin and we do act out, if, if I could put it that way. But here we see now, pride, it destroys the family to the degree where you will do the unthinkable. See, I know some of you right now say, preacher, I'll never do that to my child. I heard that happen, what this mama did to her baby, what this daddy did to her baby. I heard what this uh, a parent did to their child, but I'll never do that. When you let pride creep into your heart, you don't know what you'll do. 
That's how dangerous this thing is. Saul said, I know more than you do, God. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to obey your word. I'm going to live my own life. And we see what happens. It destroyed his faith, destroyed his family, but also it destroyed his future. Now I say, preacher, wait a minute. You said when he died, he went into Abraham's bosom. I said, exactly right. But while he was on earth, God allowed him to live many more years after that. About seven years, matter of fact, some believe. For seven years, he lived a miserable life. For seven years, he could have no peace, no comfort, no joy. There was not a record in the God's Word. And you can take up this challenge if you want to. You'll not find him happy one bit at all. You'll not find him rejoicing and prophesying and worshiping and glorifying the God of heaven. He comes short of living that life. Why? Pride. Pride robbed him of the blessings of life. Pride robbed him of having a wonderful and good life. I know if I took a survey this morning, every single one of you would be a preacher, I want to have a good life. And it's not because I deserve to have a good life. I just want to have a good life. And here this man, he comes short of the life that God wanted him to have on earth. But then, even in the day of, reconcil uh, of reconciling, the day that he stood before God, beloved, he went before God ashamed. He died out of the will of God. I know that's not talked about much in the day that we live in. But I don't know about you, I want to die right. Amen. Amen. Oh, I said it Wednesday, I'm going to say it again. Hey, whatever direction that tree is leaning toward, it's going to fall. Say, preacher, what are you talking about? Whichever way you're leaning towards is probably the direction you're going to go. And the life that you're living, you're living like you're going to hell is probably you're going there. But if you're living a life like you're leaning toward heaven, hallelujah. Hey, he said, I want to die right. I want to live right here. But Saul did not end up that way. He did not end up living right for God. And when he died there, and my beloved, I want to let you know this. When Christ rose from the grave, what did he do? He took up with him those that were in Abraham's bosom. Couldn't you imagine that day? Couldn't you imagine that day when old King Saul seen Jesus Christ there? Do you think he was happy to see the Lord? No, he wasn't. You think you, some of you will be happy to see the Lord? I hope you say, amen, preacher. I will be happy to see him. I hope that every single one of us right now say, preacher, I'm going to be jumping for joy because I'm living right. Now, see, there's some of us, I believe, in all my heart, you've got pride and you're dealing with pride. But i got good news for you, child of God. Now, I'm listening to me well. I'm not here to beat you up and I'm not here to say I'm better than you because, boy, when we got through some of these things right here, I had to find my prayer closet. And I'm just telling you right now, I deal with this. I struggle with me, myself, and I. I deal with this thinking thing called flesh, with this thing that's called the old nature there, this thing of pride. And my beloved, I'll tell you this here, I don't want that pride to eat away of my life and be like they cancer and rob me of the goodness of God and the blessings of the Lord. I've got good news for you now. Hey, there's a place where pride dies. There's a place where all pride dies and that place is called Calvary. Hallelujah. Hey man, hallelujah. I'm about to get excited about this one here. So you just hold tight if you're bored here this morning. I'm just telling you, there's a place that's called Calvary. No matter who you are, no matter what sins that you have done in your life. Say, preacher, I don't have a problem with pride. Maybe you got a problem with lying. Maybe you got a problem with stealing. Maybe you got a problem with whatever that sin may be. I've got good news. Hallelujah. There's a hill called Calvary where the Lord Jesus Christ died for every single one of us. And at that hill, praise God, all sin loses its power. Praise God. And if you just come to that hill, listen, if you come to Mount Calvary, Oh, thank God, those chains can be broken. Amen. The chains of sin can be broken at Calvary. Oh, I've got to read this here. Oh, I want to read this here to you. And I'm in Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm about to kick these shoes off. Hallelujah. And get excited for Jesus. This is what I'm talking about, church. Hey, thank God. Thank God for Calvary. Notice what it says here in Hebrews chapter 1, 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 4. The Bible says, For if it's possible that by the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin, wherefore he cometh into the world and saith sacrifice, 
sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me. What is he talking about? He's talking about the body of Jesus Christ has been prepared. I'm so thankful that Jesus Christ, he was born of a virgin. Aren't you? Praise God. He was born of a virgin there and he lived a holy, perfect, sinless life. Praise God. And John Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Hey, God prepared for him a body. To do what, preacher? Oh, we're going to find out. Praise God. Notice what he said here. And then I lo I come in the volume of a book as it's written to me to do thy will, O God. Above when thou hast said sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings of sin, thou wouldest not, neither hast pleasure in them. For why? It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Amen. Who was made iniquity for you and I. But he never committed any sin. For he who knew no sin was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And then he said here, the Bible says, and uh, sacrifices, offerings, that have burnt offerings and offerings of the sins thou wouldest not, neither has pleasure in them which are offered by the law. This he said, Lo, I come to do the will, O God, and to take away, hallelujah, the first. What is that first? I'm glad that you're asking what that first is. That's the first covenant, amen. Hey, that's that covenant there of all the sacrifices of what? Blood of bulls and goats. He said, I come to take away the first covenant and to establish, hallelujah, the second one. And now he says this in verse number 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Mm. Say, preacher, that's a lot right there. I'm so glad that you admit that it is a lot. And if I can unpack this right quick, like I'm just here to tell you, friend, hey, whatever sin it is that you are struggling with, whatever sin that's in your life, and I'm pretty sure it's pride. If you come to the foot of the cross, if you come to Jesus Christ by faith, where he took your sins, where he was made sin for you, and by the shedding of his blood, there's remission of sin. Through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, what Jesus can do and the power of God and what he can do when you come to him by faith, he can set you free, hallelujah. He can take that sin and wash it away, hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you now, you can let pride hold you back. You can let it tear you down a road that you never thought you'd go down, hallelujah. But if you come to Christ, hallelujah, he'll set you free from that sin, amen. amen. That's the hill that every single one of us needs to visit this morning. You need to come to the cross. Amen. Say, preacher, I'm not lost, I'm saved. Neither was he. Amen. Saul was a believer in the Lord, but yet he let pride grab hold of his heart and boy, destroy his faith, destroy his family, and destroy his future. Can I remind you, you can't handle sin. None of us can handle sin, but Christ Jesus did. Amen. Jesus took your sins on the cross. Will you come right now? Pride is your greatest enemy. Humility is your greatest friend. And some of you need to humble yourself right now before a holy God. Some of you need to come right now and get off your high horse and admit it. Say, Lord, I have not been obedient to your word. God, I have not obeyed your commands. I've come short of it, Lord. I've been living my own life. I've been doing my own thing. I've been trying to handle everything in my family. I've been trying to handle my own faith there. I've been trying to regulate my future. I've got it all planned out. Well, you need to come to God and say, Lord, I've made a mess of it. I'm sorry that I've disobeyed you. I'm sorry that I disobeyed your word. And I got good news. If you confess your sins, he's faithful, he's just. He'll forgive you. Come to Christ. Come to the cross right now. See, pride will keep you back. Don't listen to the devil. Hold on to that pride. Let go of it. Amen. Some of you need to be saved this morning. I believe that as well. Some of you are lost. You don't have a relationship with Jesus. Pride's going to hold you back from that. Oh, my beloved, pride. There's many people right now saying, oh, I should have listened to the message. I should have listened to God. I should have been that whosoever. I should have got rid of my church membership. I should have got rid of my church baptism. I should have got rid of my good works. I should have got rid of my deeds. I should have got rid of all these titles. I should have got rid of all these things that I was trusting in to get me to heaven. Nothing's going to get you but by the blood of Jesus Christ. We read this right here over in the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, listen to me well, you might need to be saved today, and I believe you do. 
In verse number 50, Jesus, and when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple rent in twain from top to bottom. What is he saying? Why would the Bible tell us that? Why? Because of the death of Jesus Christ, all may enter into the presence of God. But you got to come through Christ and Christ alone. You got to get rid of your pride and say, well, preacher, I'm being a good girl and I'm being a good boy and I'm working, I'm doing, I'm laboring, I'm giving money there, I'm helping little ladies and I'm doing all these things and God, he's going to let me in. No, he's not. He's not going to let you in that way. You got to repent and believe the gospel. Pride is keeping some of you back from salvation. Pride is keeping some of you from having a strong family. A strong family. Husbands and wives, none of us are perfect in this thing here. And see, there's two words that I find so often it's hard for a wife to say or even a husband to say. I'm sorry. Amen. I'm sorry. I was wrong. That's three words there. I know that. Amen. What? Pride. Keeping you from having a strong family. What's wrong with that? What, what, where's that gone? Is it so much for you to have that ego of never being wrong? Can I get good news for you, Israel? None of us are there. None of us are Jesus. We're going to do wrong. Maybe we don't want to do wrong, and I, I thank God that you don't want to do wrong, do wrong. But when you do wrong, you ought to be willing to say, I'm sorry. I am sorry that I broke your heart. I'm sorry that I didn't keep my word. I'm sorry that I was not there. I'm sorry that I forgot. Whatever it may be, I am sorry. See, when we're asked in the day that we live in, how's things going for you? How's your home life? Oh, everything's good. Everything is fine. We're good at saying that lie. The honesty that is needed before us today. Don't let pride destroy your life and your family life. Pride keeps many back from salvation. Pride keeps many back from having a strong family. Pride will keep you back from being satisfied in life. The Lord Jesus Christ gives us contentment. Amen. I'm satisfied with Him. Living, doing His will not my will. The question before us this morning is what about you? Ecclesiastes 8 and 8 tells us that none of us had the power over the day of death. None of us. What about you? When you die, what about you? How's it going to be? I'm asking you, beloved. None of us had the power to stop death. How are you going to die? Are you going to die in the prideful state? Say, nope, not listening to God, not obeying His Word. Yeah, I've been getting by with the preacher for a year now. I've been living this way for two years now. I've been living this way for ten years now. You don't know the time frame on the mercies of God. But I will tell you this, there's going to come a time, child of God, just as God says, Saul, this is your day to die. You've got it. How are you going to die? In your pride? Or humble before Christ. Humble before Him. What about you? Are you going to perish in your pride rejecting Jesus Christ? Are you going to die in the pain of your pride there? Of leaving this world. I think one of the most prideful things that anybody could do. And selfish thing that anybody can do. And you listen to me on this now. You ain't heard nothing else. When you die, you leave this world not having your relationship right with your loved ones. I believe that's one of the most selfish things prideful things that anybody can do. You die not having your relationship right with your loved ones. And that's exactly what Saul did. And that's how he died. I wonder if that be us tonight, this morning. Is that you? Saul could have had a different life, one of fulfillment and joy and blessings of the Lord. So can you. If you bring your pride to a hill called Calvary. If you lay it down there at the cross, and you ask God, the cleansing power of the blood of Christ, to rid you of all your sin. Will you humble yourself today? Will you come to Christ right now? Not tomorrow, not the next service, not tonight's service, but right now. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me of my pride.
Father, we pray in the name of Jesus right here, right now. I know that there are people that need to come. Lord, they need to be honest before you and transparent. And Lord, they need to pray and pour out their life before you. God, I'm asking of you that you will please draw those hearts and deal with those souls. My God of heaven, help us to be individuals ever more thankful for what Jesus has done. God, there are those that are in that bondage. Their heart has become so hard by sin, pride itself. Lord, it's been a long time since they were thankful for Calvary. It's been a long time that they've been back to Calvary. And maybe they need to revisit that old rugged cross again. Maybe this morning they need to come and find a place and just say thank you, Lord, for the power of the blood. Lord, maybe they need to pray and ask for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ and be delivered. God, there may be that mama, Lord, that's hanging on to the Lord, that pride of herself and not going to tell her child, I'm sorry. Lord, there may be that child, oh God, that needs to call that parent and say, Daddy, I'm sorry. Lord, there may be that husband or her wife needs to repent and tell you that I'm sorry. Lord, I hadn't been the husband that I should be to my wife. I hadn't been the wife that I should be. Lord, there may be that one here this morning that will confess I have not been the child of God unto the Almighty God, my Father. Please forgive me of my pride. Lord, may we find a place now around this old-fashioned altar. In Jesus' name. If you'll stand to your feet, church.